Welcome back. Or you're just going into it. We're the bourbon junkies. You stand up show. So, like a week ago, or two weeks ago, or some odd period of time ago that mm -hmm. exists in the past, not the future or present at this point, we asked a Facebook group to tell us a bunch of whiskey myths, but only, myths only. Okay. Myths only. Yeah, yeah, like popular myths. Could be a myth to the person, could be a myth to the community. Okay. Right? I gotta, I gotta ask you. Right. Gotta ask about what well, there's right. a little setup there. I kinda like it. Well you want you wanna run a little into the AM, dude? Yeah, I think right. I think we should talk about it. Alright, there we go. There we go. Look at that, dude. Nice little into the AM flannel action. I wanted the jacket, not the shirt. Oh shit, my bad dude. Here you go, ready? There you go, dude. Look at that. What listen. are we gonna do about the shirt though? I mean, listen, this we're kind of matching up right now. Kind of matching happened. up. A little flannel, a little bomber. I love this bomber jacket. And actually, this black flannel, because I'm going to take the bomber off. Dude, it's thick. These, I got a blue one, and I requested a black flannel because yes. I love the blue one. Mm. If you guys are looking for a little into the AM action, there is a discount code in the description Woo. under this video and on the screen right now, into the AM.com slash bourbon junkies for Do like 20% off. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something out here. It's a great deal, great clothes. Also, they're running a huge giveaway that soon. is starting very soon. So watch out for that. We'll, we'll be, be posting. A part of it. Well, we will be a part of it. We're gonna be actually be putting together a little whiskey list for one of the gift cards that's being given away. Thank you, Into the AM, for working with the channel. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. They make great stuff. A lot of you guys have reached out to us, yeah. told us you picked their stuff up, and have told us how much you liked it. So we do. I'm gonna change because I'm fat and this is hot. So today, like we said, we're gonna talk about whiskey myths. The people in the Facebook group, people in the community, yeah. mentioned to us. We're the myth busters, dude. We're the whiskey myth busters. Right. Okay, With, that's probably We got more science simple. on our side. You're a chemist, right? We got the savant on our side, AKA the expert, AKA the best ever, one of expert. them. Expert, yeah. Right, okay. exactly. Myth number one. I see this one a lot. Okay. People still talk about this one. Okay that bourbon has to be made in Kentucky is one that people still cling to because bourbon is known as the, like the bourbon country. Kentucky it's is known heart. as the bourbon country, it's, yeah. It's, it's where it came from, it originated. Yeah, 100%. I will cut you. You said bourbon is known as the bourbon country. You said those words. I, I I'll run it back if I you want. Kentucky. Did I not? Hey, real quick, black and white runner back. Bourbon is known as the, like the bourbon country. Now that we know what you said, cause it was bourbon, Kentucky, you're 100% right in your thought process. <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> is seen as the heart of bourbon. Yeah, because the originator of bourbon. Realistically, it is where most of the big main distilleries mm -hmm. are. Old Forester, Brown Buffalo Trace, Heaven Hill, yep. Wild Turkey, a lot of those guys. Everyone. Less and less now it is being made there. Yeah. They're still making a ton of it, but a lot of craft distilleries are popping up everywhere. We talked about it before, this little company, NGP, Midwest Grand True, Products, very true. where we never talked about it in that video. Uh, in Indiana, producing a metric shit ton yes. of bourbon. Yeah, Sean and I were trying to find like an actual statistic as to how much is made in Kentucky now. Yeah. What we found was in 2013, 95% of bourbon was made in Kentucky. Yeah. What we found was in 2015, 85% of bourbon was made in Kentucky. Which is a large volume. Here in, in two years, 10% less, right? Yeah. So, like Sean just mentioned with the craft stuff, in 20, probably 17, 18, there was a huge craft boom. Yeah. And so when that boom happened, that, that percentage of whiskey being made in Kentucky just keeps getting lower every year. So it doesn't have to be made in there. Bourbon doesn't have to be made in America. Myth number two. Sourced whiskey is bad. A lot of people used to hide that they were sourcing whiskey. When we knew even less than we know now, we didn't even know like that people were sourcing. Yeah, we, we just assumed whoever was on the label was the one making the whiskey. Which is kind of, I mean, in theory, it's a safe assumption. Because Come to find even out, if not you real. do know that people source, it's still this tiny little thing on the, usually in the back yep. of the label, just buried in very fine print. Yep. What will you find out later is that actually a lot of source whiskey is fantastic and amazing. A lot of people get upset about people sourcing whiskey. This is how I think about it, and it doesn't upset me. Let's put it that way. I can't wait for this. I think about it like if I open a bottle of whiskey and I don't know where it's from, right? But I drink it and I go, holy shit, that's amazing. Okay. Then I go, I'm gonna drink the rest of that bottle and enjoy the shit out of it, mm -hmm. realistically. Why would it upset me where it came from when I enjoy the product? 
You're more about what's in the bottle, Let's not just enjoy who put it into the bottle or who made the distillate. Whether um, Heaven Hill is sourcing for people yeah. and then making their own product, and those people that they source for put a different label on it, if it still tastes like good Heaven Hill, I'm still enjoying a lot of it and as much as I can, as often as I can without having any problems. A lot of the sourced MGP stuff is like Buffalo Trace Antique Collection level. Yeah. Myth number three. This is, this is where we're about to lose a lot of people. If you guys read the title of the video and then click this, this is what you're here for if you're wondering. <laughs> the myth is Jack Daniels isn't bourbon. The myth. Oh, I, that was so close to that. <laughs> is Jack Daniels bourbon or is it not? Yes. Um, if you go to their website, no. So that's because they choose to be called Tennessee a whiskey. Thousand percent. They made up their own category yep. to make themselves outside of bourbon. Mm -hmm. They they follow every law that is required for them to call it bourbon. They do. They choose to call it something else. So the Lincoln County process, which is what was what they call the process they use, they filter this whiskey before it ages through charcoal, right? And when they do that, it's supposed to mellow and smooth the whiskey out, and whatever, make it more drinkable, mass appeal type thing. Realistically, yep. what it does for them is it sends them outside of the world of bourbon mm -hmm. into a Tennessee market. Now, Tennessee whiskey market. The thing about it is, is what they're doing doesn't actually make it not bourbon. Now, they're yeah. allowed to call it Tennessee whiskey. They do say it's not bourbon. Yep. Legally, it is actually bourbon, I believe. Yeah. I don't know if them saying it's not bourbon makes it legally not bourbon. You can literally take whiskey oh God. and dump it out of a barrel and dump it into another shit show of a barrel from some shit ass mezcal finish and still call it bourbon. Jack Daniels Finished. is <laughs> bourbon. Yeah. So wait, before we get to the fourth myth, like, comment, subscribe. Do it. Go ahead, do that. Do it. Not a new sound, but not if this you week. Never hit that. You might. Uh, find YouTube out what it like. did say that in the next couple weeks, though, mm -hmm. if you already did like this video specifically, okay, there'd be a new noise eventually. Yeah, they said something like that. Myth number four. Older whiskey is better whiskey. Always. No, that's not true. Is that's that's why it's a myth, right? That's why it's on the list. Get this nice twenty-five year Canadian whiskey. We should just kill this bottle. She's sad and lonely and old. It's literally called entrapment. Twenty this is twenty-five year old Crown Royal. Um pretty much, yeah. At a really low proof and it was about hundred and fifty dollars. Listen, is the label gorgeous? Of course it is. Is the story behind the orphan barrel stuff good? Of course it is. Elijah Craig 18. <laughs> We're not done talking about the first one and you brought in the second one. Here's another example. It is another example. Very old whiskey mm -hmm. that we very much don't like. Yeah. But I we, would say we don't like that. This one. one would be more acceptable. Like no one's gonna be thinking 25 year Canadian's great. Yes. Everyone would be thinking 18 year Kentucky. Right. Probably really good. Right. Ooh, so oaky. There's a lot of examples. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of examples. Um that seem to show that more age isn't always better. Mm -hmm. There is a 40 year old bourbon, right? That is probably like gnawing It's on black an oak and tree. apparently, you, I don't even think you can see through it for real. And I believe that it's said to be undrinkable. But the purpose of that whiskey isn't necessarily to drink. The purpose of that whiskey is actually to kind of collect, obviously. You look at it, you're like, ooh, Yeah, it's that's pretty, nice. yeah, it's 40 yeah. years old. But the reason that <laughs> bourbon has a hard time like beyond these you're using whole hyper aging. Oak. Yeah, it's all brand new oak. Whereas Scotts is using a lot of secondary barrels. This is why I have such a hard time when people, when people like talk, speak so highly of a whiskey based on like a tech spec sheet. Yeah. Where the sheet's like, well, it's a hundred dollars and it it's 18 years old yep. and it's a hundred proof. And then you're like, oh, it's all these great things. The problem is I haven't drank it. Yep. The problem is it could still be miserable. <laughs> it theoretically could be awesome and it could also be awful. How the whiskey turns out is so determined by climate and where it is in a warehouse. There's a sweet spot it, for it, everything. Yeah, and what kind of wood you used and which tree was cut down. Like I, I would also just kind of extend this to rye. Like you can have a young rye, two years, that's amazing. True, years. a lot of bourbon. So you're real... talking like a six to 12, maybe 15 yeah. years, a sweet spot often. Not always, but often. So don't get fooled by an age statement on a label. It's yeah. not always the best thing in the world because it's 15 to 20 to 20. Pappy 23 is not the best Pappy, just saying. Myth number five. Expensive whiskey is always better than cheap whiskey. Yeah. You ready for this? Oh, I forgot. I don't like this one. Hey. Oh, we almost lost her. Don't, don't worry about I it. I don't like this. I don't like this flip because this is not a cork. I know. This is a decanter. This is probably one of our most disliked. It was 
four hundred dollars. Yeah, after tax it was real close. Yeah. So, um, expensive whiskey often. There's diminishing returns on expensive whiskey. That's right. a good way to put it. Yeah. After sixty, definitely diminishing returns. We always said eighty to hundred is some of the worst price ranges. Dead man's I think, land. Yeah, like not a lot of stuff exists there. And it's the like the Nevada does, desert before Burning Man. It's not good. <laughs> right. Often, if you're looking for eighty to hundred, I thought I was gonna say more, and my brain. I know like, eh. what Sean's trying to say is, if you're looking for an eighty to hundred, you can probably find a sixty dollar bottle that's better than most of the stuff. Yeah. Eighty to hundred. So us paying 400 for this yeah. means it should be four times as good as a hundred dollar bottle right in theory on paper probably four times as worse <laughs> i mean it's four years old some of it <laughs> now some whiskeys are more expensive because they're allocated some whiskeys are more expensive because they're they're age and yeah. proof and all this stuff is is great yep. on price paper. does dictate some things being a little bit better. Right. The, I mean, the, the more sought after bottles are usually a little bit more, sure. but don't be fooled by something with an age statement or a price tag. If it's something that you've never heard of. Right. I mean, all these ideas go together yeah. that it just doesn't equal better. Whiskey. Right. That's why, that's why the, this idea that if you walk into a shop and you don't know a lot about whiskey and you go look at the top shelf and you go, mm -hmm. that's a hundred old Forster 1920 60. So that's probably better than old Forster 1920. Mm -hmm so often that that is incorrect it's insane so there you go those are just five myths if you guys like this we, we, we listen there were 300 comments in the there facebook so group many. on this post so if you guys like this myth type video let us know we myth can run busted. more of these listen we just busted some myths you know what i'm saying <clears throat> so we're the bourbon junkies i'm dan he's sean let us know in the comments how you felt about the video like comment subscribe check out patreon facebook the proof is in the pour it's like mm. you did speed